Hey, hey you everybody! Guys. You guys? Um, you're watching Trenny and C. We're a couple of dudes that do whiskey reviews and whiskey related stuff. We do full reviews on Thursdays, unboxing and uh, other randomness on Saturdays. Random crap on Saturdays. So, um, either way, two videos a week. Yeah, two videos a week. Today, we're talking about how to drink whiskey. We've had a lot of questions like, from people. How do you guys review your whiskey? How do you drink whiskey? From a beginner's standpoint, what do I do? Do it, I just go and buy a bottle? Oh, and hold on. In theory, yeah. like when someone asked this question, my first answer was like, open your face <laughs> and dump the whiskey into your face. Yeah. It's pretty simple. How do I drink whiskey? Open your mouth, dump it in your face. Yeah, pop the cap, put it in your mouth. But then we started thinking about it and we were like, hey, there's a little more to We this. don't always just do that. We don't always just, uh, uh, right? Yeah. There's more to it. So um, we're going to walk you through our 10-step program on how to drink whiskey. So stick around. We'll be right back. Irish Scotch, bourbon and rye. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. So where we go? Okay. okay, here we are. We're back. We're going to talk about our 10 step program, but before we do that, yeah. we're going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, glassware. Seriously. What do you use? What do you use what in you a pinch? to drink especially. whiskey? Or especially in a pinch. So, let's Let me, just start with the professionals, like us. Yeah. Let's remove these Trini oh. and C coasters. Bet you can buy two of them for $10. <laughs> what a steal. Forget <laughs> for who, Who's stealing? Okay. Okay, so these are called Glen Caring glasses. They were designed by the whiskey producers in Scotland, and it is very specific to Scotch whiskey. And it is basically what you can get. You can get them online. You can uh, actually go to trennyandc.com and probably buy them. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Can't forget <laughs> that. Uh, but they have the bowl shape, and then it's tapered at the top to kind of seal in those, um, those aromas and the flavors. So one of the biggest things with tasting whiskey is actually the nose. Yep. And when you have a glass that, that uh, condenses the flavors kind of into like a a little like pyramid thing at the top that's when you can get the most out of your nose and you can spend an hour just nosing a glass of whiskey we often spend a lot of time nosing a glass of whiskey i mean in a pinch we did mention in a pinch in a pinch you could use one of these you know this is kind of your typical hotel style wine glass that you might get in a hotel room um but it'll work where did we get that it, at a hotel we <laughs> stole it from a hotel um but it's kind of got the same idea. It's got a bit of a um, tapered top to it. Not quite as nice as the Glen Cairn, but it's got a stem on it. But, it'll, it'll but I would go that with, for that with second second resort, if yep. you could say it. We've also got these ones that we got. These happen to be big peat glasses that we got from uh, Douglas Lang and Co. And these ones are nice because they're they're a bit of a hybrid because they're, they are they have the stem and the it's a the uh, stemmed Glen Cairn style with a big bowl on it so it's kind of a bit of a go-between there and then finally you've got your last but not least but probably least your normal kind of tumbler it's just style. a regular tumbler the problem with the tumbler these are great for mixing your drinks but the problem with tumblers is you can't get a good nose out of them yeah everything seems to kind of it just leave. kind of evaporates when the when the bowl top is too big when so it tapers it's great our real recommendation is if you can get your hands on one, spend a couple bucks, get the Glen Cairn glass, and uh, and do it right. Otherwise, in a pinch, um, really use anything. Yeah. So, okay. anyway, there you go. So that's glassware. Um, so before we get into the ten steps, couple other things. We've made some assumptions. Yeah. We've made some assumptions. The first assumption is we're assuming that you're able to figure out how to get into the bottle and actually yeah. uncork it. Sometimes it's a cork, sometimes it's a cap. Both are fine. The cork is more pleasing to the ear. 
Uh, we just really hope that you've figured out how to get into your bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we've assumed is that you know how to pour your whiskey. Yeah, you're not pouring it all over We're your face giving, or whatever. Not giving you a lesson on how to pour whiskey. You know, if you're doing it wrong, I think you'll figure it out. Just Speaking of that, get it in the glass. We should probably pour some whiskey. Let's pour some whiskey. Okay. Uh, rule number By the one, way, this is spring mix, ten year old delicious stuff. It's not even really a rule. It's suggestion number one is you do it with a lineup, and the reason that you taste whiskey in a lineup is so that you can taste the difference in the flavors. Often, if you taste a whiskey by itself, you're gonna think certain things about it. But then if you taste it side by side with another whiskey, you're going to all of a sudden go, oh, maybe that's not as peaty as I thought it was, or maybe that's not as sweet as I thought it was, or any number of different characteristics that you might uh, discover. It's always good because sometimes you'll taste a whiskey and be like, this is delicious, but you try it next to another one and you realize that there's actually a benchmark that you should be measuring against within your tasting and your nosing notes. Yeah. Because, again, like C was saying, you pour a couple whiskeys side by side, it gives you a really good reference point of what is sweet and what is salty and what is PD and what is whatever. So, what we do suggest, when you are putting a bunch of bottles side by side, like this, um, the way we have it from left, to right here is our lowest percentage of alcohol all the way up so this is 40% then 46% and then again 46% this one here 60. Ben Romic is a cask strength so yes that's really high 60% alcohol but then a peated whiskey the Lagavulin 8 year old it's lower in percentage but because it is peaty you are going to taste nothing else but peat for the rest of the night. You should be saving your peated whiskeys for last. Rule number five, or suggestion number five, is add water. So we've got our little uh, barrels of water here. So, um, go ahead. I was just going to say that <coughs> we've got these nice little water spouts. Typically with water, they say to use you know a distilled water so that you don't get chlorine and... Uh, fluoride and other things in there messing with your flavors. So now he just poured some water into his whiskey. If you were to do a review and you're writing notes and things like that, you pour your whiskey, do some notes, do your nose, your color, your taste, finish viscosity, and then add your water and see what happens to your whiskey. Absolutely. That is a good thing to do. So even side by side between these two, same whiskey, one has water, one doesn't, it does actually either add or take away a component. It's Usually good. add, but... It's gonna alter the flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, on to a suggestion or rule number six, and that is understand your flavors. So, we suggest that if you are a, you know, a new person to whiskey, that go online and search the flavor wheels, you know? See what it says around the, um, you know, is it a... Is it grassy and malty? Is it fruity? Is it chocolatey? <coughs> yeah, a number so, of different so types of flavors. A lot of these bottles, they will be, for example, aged in an ex bourbon barrel, or some will be aged in an ex sherry barrel, or in this case, this one is aged in an ex baked Malmsey Madeira cask. So these are all different finishes you can have on whiskeys, so you kind of learn what flavor profiles go with which whiskey. So as C is saying, you get that flavor wheel, you can discover what herbs are in it, mm -hmm. what fruits, what vanillas. Is what, it medicinal? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of different things on the flavor wheel that will help guide your understanding of what you're actually tasting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number seven. <coughs> Number seven, idea number seven is a is a huge one. It's probably the biggest. It's the biggest. You've got to score your whiskey. Why do you have to score your whiskey? So you can rank it, so you know where the better ones are. Are they at the top? Are they at the bottom? Well, the better ones are going to be at the top, but is the one you're tasting at the top or is it at the bottom? And sometimes it surprises you. It's super easy to do scoring of whiskey by going to 
scoremywhiskey.com. That's our site. We have a scoring methodology built right in there that helps you. You just go in there, you plug in your digits, color, what is it out of 10? Nose, taste, finish, and viscosity, all out of 10. Plug them in, gives you the score. Easy does it. Awesome. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of fun, actually. And that's number eight, is have fun. Try different things. Uh, try whiskey stones, try the whiskey wedge, put ice in there, um, do shots, mix it, make cocktails. Do whatever you wanna do. Have fun with it. It's supposed to be fun. So don't just stick with, I'm gonna drink it neat because that's the coolest way to do it or something like that. Just do different stuff, have fun. Do you know what, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that say like, how to drink whiskey like a gentleman. That's such bullshit because there's a lot of women out there that drink whiskey. There's a lot of people that just do it for the pure fact that they're beginners. There's some people that are, I shouldn't say professionals, but experienced. So if you're putting a level of snobbery in your whiskey, then it becomes not fun. And as Steve said, make it fun. Number nine, don't let anyone tell you how to drink <laughs> your whiskey. Not even us. <laughs> not true. even this not even us. thing that all about how to drink whiskey. Forget it. We'll throw that out. Okay, number 10 is drink responsibly. Ooh, good point. Arrive alive. If you're gonna drink, find a method home. Do not drive. That's uh, absolutely vital. Trenny and I, we always look like we're having a great time here. But you know what? We're not going anywhere. This is We're probably gonna fall asleep in this chair. We, we are having anywhere. a great time, but we don't have to call a cab, we're not at a bar, we're at home in the comfort of our own home. If you are planning on going out and drinking for the night, please do it responsibly. That's right. Right? I think that's how we should end this bad boy. Yeah. Hey, cheers. Okay, cheers to that. Trey How to drink whiskey. Steve.